if you'd have said to me right, 30, in 30 years' time, when this is the time of the strike, that that's it, that'd be the last pit closing, I'd have, I'd have just laughed at you. It's absolutely disgusting. It, it really is. I mean, when you think this country is built on coal. Forsley Colliery, that was the final pit to be operational in the Nottinghamshire coal field. And it closed in 2015. That is seven years later. And it opened in 19. 25 and it was two shafts 690 meters deep in the 1950s the shafts were deepened by a further 109 feet and production went on under the coal board up until 1990 before it was privatized and taken over by rjb mining so seven years later what of the site of the colliery and the railway line that came off the former railway line over there which is now a test track it used to go off to high marlin power station and also before that onto Lincoln. The power station closed in 2003. So the final workings going down this line before it turned into the test track did in fact come from this pit. And the pit closed in September 2015 and workings did continue for a short while after to complete the stockpiles coming out and clearing the land. I'm now stood on that former track bed. I'm gonna turn you around. There is the active test track just there and the junction is down there and I'm not going to go any further than this towards that line because we don't go near active railway lines but the track and the junction was removed in late 2019 I believe it was and all the sidings that were in the sidings yard just over there beyond the signal box so this is our view going forward and it's around about half a mile in length to take us to the former colliery we've got a couple of bridges to go over and there is one to go under too so I'm hoping to find something. When I was last here, there was track down. And this track, as you can see, has gone. You can see there's plenty of ballast and you can see the indentations of where the sleepers were. So I'm gonna try and get some drone footage up because when I did this back in 2019, it's one of the very first videos I did. And there's a few colliery lines that I want to revisit because I never had a drone and I've never had things like historical images to use or beautiful soundtracks as well. So. This might be the first of a few revisits. We'll just have to wait and see. A little look at railmaponline.com. You can see that blue line from left to right. That's the former Lancashire Derbyshire East Coast Railway. Later on, part of the Great Central Railway, you've got Clipston Junctions on the left-hand side and you've got the former Ollerton Colliery on the right. Forsby Colliery Junction is slap bang in the centre there and the colliery it's just up top, around about half a mile of branch line for us to walk today. Let's have a look at this old map from the 1930s. And you can see clearly the black dashed line left to right. That is the main line, now the network rail test track. And here you can see Forsby Colliery Junction and the Colliery Branch Line going up, looping round right where the W is in Edwinstow and the Colliery Grounds and Sidings on the right hand side. Go into the partially faded map and we can see it a little bit clearly how it looks in the way the land lies today and straight over with an overlap of google maps and you can see it's pretty much all gone apart from the scar of the former colliery site a lot of which since this google map has been taken this image has been built on and it is a little less gray and more green <laughs> So I've got myself trackside next to Forsby Colliery signal box and I haven't been here for a couple of years now but something quite peculiar has changed and I'm going to show you. So it's a public foot crossing going across all the way over there. Notice they've put a lot of that green security fencing up along there. Now bear in mind there's barely any workings goes along here now just test trains and stop movements. You could go weeks with nothing and when something does run it's probably few and far between. There's the style, public footpath post, and then boom. Now, 
That surprised me because I thought public footpaths were public footpaths and obviously they've obtained some kind of permission to stop people going on there, but that's quite a surprise. But it's not like it's a busy line and whether it's due to potential vandalism of the signal box over there, I really haven't got a clue. If anybody knows when this was done and why, I'm really interested to know because there's far busier crossings on the network, isn't there? <laughs> and you can just walk across them and just stop, look and listen and beware of trains. This one might not even see a working down it till next week. Strange. I can get you a closer view of the signal box. Unfortunately, I can't go around the other side because of that crossing closure, which is very weird. But yeah, there's the signal box. I believe it is still in operation as and when trains come from the main line and over onto the test track. <laughs> numerous traces of bits of coal mixed in the ground up where the track once was there's some more over here so that's where it's dripped out the bottom of the hopper wagons when working up this line coming to our first bridge overbridge this is and it's farm access and immediately after it is the river morn flowing below so before i take you over i'll jump down and show you what it looks like from below so the bridge below, it doubles up as farm access and also for the River Morn. And you can see we get the path taking us off towards Edwinstow, just a little way through there. Around about a quarter of a mile, it'll bring you out just there. Got the blue brick abutments look and a concrete base for the top of the bridge going all the way over. And on the northern side, exactly the same. We've got a nice view of the Morn down there. It's quite a drop. Isn't it going down there, central support there, and going over onto the other side. So the signal box and junction is just there, and the railway line, the test track is over there. So up top, look, there's quite deep sleeve indentations, and the remains of ballast, quite a bit of ballast over there. It's just basically been lifted and gone, hasn't it? We've got steel bars and meshing across the top there. Let me show you over the top. That's where we were just a moment ago. And there's the river down there too. And the other side we really can't see, but through there is the same kind of steel fencing. And looking back, just there, look. So we're going to go forwards, we're going to go onwards. I can see an old signpost just here. This was probably to warn of the junction coming up. Just there, look. <laughs> This is really, really overgrown in just three years. I mean, it's to be expected, isn't it? It's kind of like the sleepers at rails or even just the sleepers when they're down, they seem to prohibit the weeds and undergrowth from sprouting up. And once they've gone, it's like pulling a plug and the weeds just go poof and they're here. And it just takes away what once was. It's, it's absolutely unreal. Thank you. 
second overbridge and this is primarily farm access so we're not going to go down and have a look underneath this one you can see it's as if the track could have been or would have been double track at some point the width of this bridge is quite wide you see the indentations of the ballast and where the sleepers were quite clearly and you can tell you're on a bridge because there's pretty much nothing growing on the top as there would be on the rest of the track bed so that's our view looking downwards quite a drop and looks pretty boggy as well the abutments on both sides and that's Edwin Snow over there on the other side we can get over this time and have a look at the view across again similar steel poles and posts and that's our view looking over towards Rufford and Ollerton is in that direction over there cool this bit looks a bit I mean look at the size of that tree already it's got to be about 12 15 foot tall seven years of growth it's unreal let's um Oof, push through hopefully without mouthfuls of cobwebs this must be a bit of fertile land just here and out the other side looks like it's going to clear up actually as we get towards the main road it looks like things may be about to get a little easier there's another silver birch just here look pretty much the same height as the previous one they just shoot up don't they so a short way up from that bridge we've just crossed and i think i found something significant i believe this was the original crossing this half a gate there and there's a great big concrete gate post just here look just there and there's another one right there and there's some remains of what also looks like a gate so what i'm going to assume is that back in the day maybe before that bridge was installed or maybe it was used at the same time who knows there was a, a farm crossing just here coming across over the track bed and this embankment is probably higher than it was back when it was being used and coming across to this side now whether there's any evidence of a gate on that side i can't quite make out i can't get close enough i can't even see anything evidence of gate posts or was it just some sort of access for the railway i don't believe it was that would be farm access and no it's too overgrown but that's what it would have been it had to have been coming across some sort of farm access so the next port of call is along this short section of cutting which is really really clear and we're going to turn up to Ollerton Road Ollerton Road will take you to Edwinstone that way and of course Ollerton in the other direction and beyond that the track bed will take a curve and it would go onto the site of Forsby Colliery just over there what looks like galvanized steel piping going up to the farmland over there i remember three years ago this was just like plastic tubing corrugated piping and stuff so they've obviously made it a lot more permanent clearly pumping water from one direction to the other to feed the farmland coming up to ollerton road bridge you can just see that appearing there no sign of any rails or sleepers whatsoever all that has been had and gone i don't believe we will find any of that now sadly Another post looked just shy of the bridge, so some sort of warning for the train crew just there. And there is Ollerton Road Bridge. That's got like concrete gantry supports going through it and typical blue brick either side and just your standard square shaped opening. Got some old telecommunication brackets still attached just there, look. That's really good, isn't it? A little bit closer. Look. Oh, that is great. And, and on the other side, you can just make them out. I'll show you when we get to the other side so you can see a bit clearer. I'm gonna go over here, look, because there's some sleepers on the ground too, concrete sleepers, which have been left. One, two, three, four, five of them. 
So these have obviously been when the rails have been ripped up a couple of years ago and they've just been left. But the other concrete sleepers have clearly been reclaimed. Quite often when it's concrete sleepers on these abandoned railway lines, they just leave them and only take the rails. If it's wooden, they often get lifted because people can use them in gardens, farmland, landscaping. So the concrete sleepers have all been removed. That is something that doesn't happen as often. And there's the brackets on the other side, look. One, two, three, four, five going down. And also this. Have a little bit of history there. You can see where the original bridge number was painted on too. So I'm taking that curve I told you about on the other side of Allerton Road, the bridge just being behind me. I can hear all manner of engineering and contractors working up there on that housing estate. And that housing estate is believed and planned to have up to 800 properties, almost 800 properties going on there. It's like an entire brand new community between Allerton and Edwinstow. So the area is going to get a lot more busier, the infrastructure, the supermarkets and the roads too. It's going to be quite crazy when everybody is living on there and those houses are full. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get all the way around like I used to do. I'm looking back at the bridge just there. You just make the bridge out there, a bit of blue bricks. That's how far I've come. But it looks like this building works going on on both sides of the track bed. So I may not be able to do that last section of track work that took us in to the former colliery. So that really is journey's end on this part of the track bed. You can see over there, look. There's engineering going off, diggers and equipment. Track bed has gone. It's been leveled off and flattened. There was a bridge just around there. And that was the access for the, um, the vehicles going in and out of the colliery and the pit buildings. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna head off around off the track bed and get on top of the old spoil leaves known as locally as Cockload Woods. And we'll see if we can get anywhere closer to the other side of the pit over there and I'll probably punch the drone in the air as well just to see what it all looks like from above on the opposite side. Best it's been great. Yeah, it's been nice you, mate, yeah. after all these years. The final goodbyes to valued workmates at Thorsby Pit in Nottinghamshire. Dale and Steve have both been in the mining industry for decades. The colliery, the last remaining in the East Midlands, ceased production today. In total, 600 jobs have gone. Terrible. It's unreal. It's a surreal day. Everyone's sad. Everyone's saying goodbye to people they've worked with for years. It's, it's horrible. There's handshakes all over him. It was, uh, it was quite sad. Tears? Yeah, near, nearly. I, I told him back, yeah. In its heyday, Thorsby was a record breaker. The nationalised pits competing with each other to produce the most coal. So I'm at the top of one of the spore heaps from Thorsby Colliery. Got rotary, cockload rotary woods to my left. I had to come through there to get on top. There's the view around. And you're going to be able to walk around here very soon. It's going to be part of a great big country park spanning all the way over there. It's going to be huge. Just there. I'll fly the drone over it. That is the last remaining building of Forsby Corrie. It's a very, very large warehouse. And when the pit was closed and all the buildings and the pit wheels were demolished, they left two of these warehouses up. Around about a year later, I think it was 2020, this first one got knocked down. And it's round about, there's a great big pile of soil or dirt there. Look, right, there's the warehouse there. Just there was the other one. So that was pretty much where that was. Now there's a retaining wall over there, which was in front of that building, and that is still there. Might be able to pick it up from the drone. And interestingly, where the railway used to go onto the pit access road, 
that's been reinforced with new concrete as another access road going under so that's maybe something that's going to be used for road transport or some kind of access to the other side like an underpass it's probably going to be an underpass for the two different halves of the community there's also going to be a primary school down there amongst the 800 houses community centers and there's even murmurings of some sort of shop going down there whether that's still true i think sainsbury's tried to uh, put an application in i don't know if that is still ongoing and going to happen or not so that is pretty much it that is the lay of the land you could have some extensive drone footage going across the top there this is going to be beautiful to walk around you can walk around it now it's not fenced off you just come up out of the woods up to the top it's a bit squidgy at the moment but this signs up saying conservation areas nesting birds there'll be some brilliant views up there overlooking sherwood forest on the other side So any disused railway walks in Nottinghamshire you'd like me to redo? I mean, I've had people suggest doing the Welbeck one again, but that has uh, gone into private land ownership now. And I don't think um, that'd be a good idea to do that one based on things I've heard. So we probably won't do that one. I did Rufford in 2020, so we won't do that one for a bit. Calverton, that doesn't need doing. Um, Billsthorpe, I never had the drone for that, but there's not a lot to see on that. It's just forest and then a great big straight bit back into Billsthorpe. So I don't know. I did Bever Cuts last year, not going to do that again. Yeah, just drop your ideas down below and I will see you in the very next one. Take care, bye-bye. It's the end of an era. Of course it is, yes, yeah. Which is a shame because it's not done through lack of reserves. You see, I mean, we've got four foot seams, you can say, from here, more or less to Skegness. So it's just lack of um, support, government money. Personally, I think we're making a big mistake shutting them all, but because uh, we've got no to rely on. If they want to tonk the ass off, we've had it, haven't we?